Can I ask you about a, a state race that's going on, the governor's race? Um, the the uh, Republicans are attacking uh, the Democratic opponent as millionaire Mary, I guess, for being too rich. What do you think about that? It's I, sort of a turnabout. I would prefer they not do it. You would prefer they not do it. The, um, the other I, well, I, I, I think one of the harmful parts of our of our politics right now, and I think it's it's not helping recovery, is that far too often in the political realm, we, we, de we demonize success. We, we demagogue against it. What we should be doing is we should be incentivizing success. I, I really thought one of the best things that Governor Walker did was upon winning the election, one of his first statements was, hey, Wisconsin, we're open for business. Uh, I think that's a powerful statement. Uh, from my standpoint, the solution the primary component of the solution of, of all these fiscal issues, and I would, I would argue cult cultural as well, is we have to have economic growth. Now, how do you get economic growth? Well, first and foremost, you have to make America or Wisconsin or Milwaukee an attractive place for business risk taking, investment, you know, business expansion, job creation. You know, how do you increase people's wages, get, get a robust economy where, where businesses have to compete for labor. That's a sustainable increase in wages. So it, how, 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 do you, how do you incentivize that? How do you make uh, your, your jurisdiction attractive if you're demonizing it? Uh, it's very dispiriting for, for people that are, that are taking risks. You know, business isn't very easy. It's, it's not easy coming up with a product or service that other people want to buy. It's, it's even more difficult providing that, that product or service at a, pre at a cost that is less than you can actually sell it to. So it's the reason I don't have a stat on it, but you know, most businesses are not particularly successful or they outright fail. So from my standpoint, I, I think we ought to be celebrating the success of those businesses that, that do succeed, and we ought to be doing everything we can to, to incentivize it and, and help them. Uh, the other two points in the race that are business related is that the company, her, her family's bicycle firm, has been criticized uh, by the governor's campaign for outsourcing. They've also been criticized on taxes. They don't pay any corporate income tax, but of course they're uh, an S corporation, I believe, like yours. Was. Right. So wh where are you on those two issues, outsourcing and attacking her for, quote unquote, not paying uh, well, you know, outsour outsourcing is one of those, uh, you know, one of those areas of demagoguery, quite honestly, demonization of businesses. You know, I was a, I was a manufacturer, and my manufacturing company is still, still, still churning out product. 80% of our customers were here in the U.S., but we, we exported to about 20 different countries. Uh, we were the sole source supply for some, and I won't name the company, some, some pretty large businesses, very, very well respected, you know, real feather in our cap. It's hard to be a source of supply. It shows you, the, you know, how, how good you are, the level of integrity you've got. It was very frequent because we only have one manufacturing operation that some of those large companies would come to us and say, well, that's kind of risky for us because if, if this operation goes down, tornado, whatever, how are you going to, uh, you know, how are you going to supply us? Uh, also, a number of these multinational companies were producing or setting up operations overseas, and there was a lot of discussion. You know, we, we'd like you to follow our manufacturing overseas so that you can source our product close to where we're actually going to be you know, manufacturing or selling it. And so th there's all kinds of reasons for wanting to open up operations overseas to take, take advantage of markets, to maintain a relationship with an important relationship that's you know, domestic-based but also uh, support their expansion. So I, I don't want to demonize it or demagogue against it. Uh, the fact of the matter is free trade overall, free but fair trade benefits everybody. It really does. If, if we start becoming uh, more protectionist, it's going to really harm our economy. It's going to harm the development of the rest of the world. And we really want the rest of the world to develop because the fact of the matter is people from around the world value American products. And so oftentimes when a, a company starts an operation in someplace overseas, yeah, they may be taking advantage of lower labor, but a lot of it's manufacturing to be shipped back over here where you have a distribution set system set up, you've got salespeople, there's, there's a lot of jobs created. And there, there's some studies showing that for every job that's supposedly outsourced, you may be creating two jobs here in America. I'm not saying that's, you know, absolute across the board, but the fact of the matter is uh, there's nothing wrong in opening up operations overseas. We shouldn't demonize it. It's actually quite beneficial to America.